Not my dog D Hop. Say it ain't so, man. Even though now Hollywood's over there, so he. Anyway, YouTube team, keep it clean. What's going on? It's Engraven here with another video, and D Hop done already appealed and lost the appeal, so them six games is final. But anyway, um, there's been a lot of commotion amongst Ravens flock today. It's been a lot of conversation and whatnot, and you know how it goes like that every day. It's always something to talk about. Um, but this is about another one of those stories that a lot of Ravens fans, they just, it's like taking a knife and just twisting it when they hear about stuff like this. Because it's like, why? Why do you have to tell us? We didn't want to know. Because it's one of those stories where the Ravens, they came close. They were interested in somebody, but they just end up coming up short. And the reason that this story is so interesting because it not only involves the Ravens coming up short, but it involves the Steelers stepping in front of the Ravens and taking what they apparently wanted. And that was Mr. Calvin Austin the 3rd. Let's read the article from Peter King, who was in the Ravens' war room. So he was in their draft room during the fourth round, a round where they had what, six picks, a round where I did not think that there was no chance, no way that they're getting ready to use all six picks. It's just not going to happen. What did they do? They made it happen. In a draft where I was like, there's no way, no how the Ravens are going to use 10 picks in this draft. It's not happening. Not a chance. What did the Ravens do? They used 11. So they, they won up me. So shout out to the Ravens for proving me all kinds of wrong. But anyway, to the article. At pick 137, the Patriots took Bailey Zapp, a quarterback from Western Kentucky. So we at pick 138 right now. A middle-round receiver, Calvin Austin III of Memphis, a Smurfy guy who runs a 4-3-2-40. I ain't like that part. You ain't got to call nobody Smurfy. You ain't got to do that. But anyway, um, a Smurfy guy who runs a 4-3-2 and a 40 uh, was Baltimore's target here. So they wanted Calvin Austin. It was a uh, high. It's receiver time, baby. All oh, these fans been waiting for us to pick a receiver. We getting ready to pick a receiver right here, right now. Like it or not, that's who we're going with. But guess who else runs a 4-3-2? Hollywood Brown. Though Austin's a small guy, he was durable at Memphis, playing 49 games in four years and averaging 16.3 yards per catch. So, the deep threat, right? The deep threat. And the speedy deep threat, smaller stature, it's like a Hollywood Brown. It would be an essential replacement, so to speak. Now, if he would have been the essential replacement, so to speak, I just wonder, he would have been a fourth-round receiver. So, you know, that's dangerous territory right there. It's very dangerous territory for him already if he would have got picked by the Ravens. Um, but I just wonder how he would be used. I wonder if he would be used. You know, Rashad Bateman, he's going to get his. But then after Rashad Bateman, that's the biggest question mark right now for me personally. Like, what are the Ravens going to do as of right here, the, the receiving core right here, right now? What are the Ravens going to do after Rashad Bateman? Who's going to be the number two? Who's going to be the number three, the slot? What are they going to do? I know a lot of people assume, oh, yeah, Devin, du Devin Duvernay just going to be the, uh, the number two. James Prochet going to be in the slot. I don't know, man. I don't know. But, hey, we will see. But, again, back to the article. So, Balt this is where it got a little funky for me. Baltimore is not a deep-throwing team, thus Brown's frustration leading to his trade request and the trade to Arizona. But the Ravens could use speed depth. Disagree with all of that except the last part. The Ravens could use speed depth because they certainly could. But Baltimore's not a deep throwing team. Lamar don't be looking for nothing but deep throws. Like nothing but. That dude is always looking for the big play. And he throwing them down there too. He trying it. Like the Ravens, they, they certainly upped their passing game a lot last year. Even if it was by force, they still did it. They, they made improvements. They, they made strides in the passing game. And we hope that that continues this year, too. But we hope that the, the quality of it is better and the, uh, the quality of the Ravens' health is better as well. So we'll see how that goes. But Baltimore is not a deep-throwing team. Wrong. Thus, Brown's frustration leading to his trade request in the trade to Arizona. Blah, blah, blah. Um, so it say, he said, Austin wasn't a must-have but he was the next target. He was Baltimore's guy. So the Ravens were all in on Calvin Austin, the one, two, third. They wanted him. That was their pick. That was who they were going to get with their next selection. He said, then over the tiny speaker, 
News that the Pittsburgh Steelers were picking wide receiver Calvin Austin from Memphis. So they heard that. All right, somebody said, you got to be kidding me. You got to be kidding me. Ravens on the clock. Uh, 440, then 435, 4 minutes and 35 seconds. The Casa had to think now. He had an open trade offers with Kansas City and the Jacksonville Jaguars, and he could pull the trigger on either. And he didn't love his options here, but his expression didn't change. Harbaugh's expression didn't change, nor did Ozzie Newsom. See, hey, there you go. Just a, another reminder that Ozzie Newsom, he's still there too. He's still involved in all this draft stuff. But anyway. Um, these things happen in the draft. Oh, yes, they do. They don't, they not only happen in draft, they happen in uh, free agency. Ravens are interested in the guy, but then, oh, it just ends up coming up just short. And hey, I'm sure there are plenty more of these stories throughout this draft alone where Ravens might have wanted a guy, but then somebody else took him, and it's like, oh, we were just right there. But see, this story is a bit different because they had an opportunity to get Calvin Austin earlier, but they went to the punter. That's what's been a lot of people's argument and the, the frustration today, that they went with the punter first over the wide receiver. And maybe um, if I'm having to try to think like the Ravens would think, maybe they felt like the punter was more of a sure thing than the wide receiver would have been. I don't Maybe that's just the, how the Ravens were thinking with this whole thing. Um, but anyway, uh, they pondered alternatives. They had two linebackers and one slower receiver with good grades left, but they didn't love any of them. Uh, there was a tight end rated very close to Kala, Isaiah Likely of Coastal Carolina. One of the best offensive tight ends in the college game last year. The Ravens thought he might be able to do some receiver things, lining up in a slot and outside as well as playing inline tight end. So they said Harbaugh said to Greg Roman, <laughs> how about Likely? Find a spot for him. And Greg Roman liked him. So, boom, they drafted him. They drafted Isaiah Likely. And I, I do like that pick um, because he's in a position that the Ravens really value a lot. Tight end. Uh, but he's somebody that is in a position where the Ravens need improvement. Wide receiver. Now, we know Ravens have, I think, like five tight ends on the roster right now. They got Nick Boyle, Mark Andrews, uh, Josh Oliver, uh, Kyla, and Likely. If I'm missing anybody else, let me know. I might be. Who knows? But anyway, they got those five guys right now. Shout out to the burgers. Greasy burgers, but great burgers. I don't want none of the peanuts, though. The fries are really good. So shout out to five guys. Anyway, um, they're not keeping five tight ends. They're not. I can see them keeping four. Even though four be pushing it, but I can see them keeping four. Now, if they only keep three, ooh, some decisions have got to be made. But if I, I think if they only keep three, then Boyle and Oliver are gone. Boyle and Oliver are gone. If they kept three tight ends, they're not going to cut Carla. Carla. They're not going to cut Likely. They're not likely to cut Likely. I know a lot of people have been throwing around them corny Likely jokes, but I've been loving all of them. Um... So, yeah, that is, it's just a, a, a bit of a head-scratcher there. Uh, what they're going to do, how they're going to operate. Ravens, like, Ravens right now, um, they, they have me just very in the dark. I don't know what to expect from them. I know they signed a lot of undrafted free agent guys, and we got to go over their, their, their film uh, over the next couple of days and go just piece by piece. Uh, so y'all stay on the lookout for that. But Ravens just have me just confused. I do not know what they are going to do. Uh, when it comes to wide receiver, some people think like, hey, they could just use the guys that they got and run with that. They could. Some people think like, hey, Ravens got a big trade coming because there's no way they went through the draft like they did and didn't didn't address wide receiver at all. You know, Isaiah likely he's going to be a little receiver slash tight end, but they ain't, they ain't address wide receiver. So it's like, OK, maybe they do. And some people are like, oh, there's free agency, too. And I look at free agency and I'm like, oh, I don't know, man. I don't know. So I'm just, I'm curious. And of course, we all got to wait it out all together. Um, but yeah, I, I'm just, I'm wondering like, what's going to be next? That's my biggest question. What's going to be next? What's going to be next? How are you going to handle this? Are you going to stand pat? 
you're going to make a trade or you're going to sign some free agents. Or undraft the free agents too. I know a lot of people have been talking about the guy Bolden. Some people have been talking about the guy, I think, uh, is it Devin Williams? I forget his name. But, again, I got to go over all the uh, undrafted free agents that they got. But, yeah, man, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. But this was a very interesting story. It was a very interesting read. Uh, and, I, I, like I said, I saw a lot of conversation from a lot of people uh, about it, uh, about everything surrounding it. Um, and I just wanted to give my little two cents on it. Uh, so it is what it is. Uh, the draft overall, again, the, the draft, it was a good draft. It was a good draft. The Ravens hit on a lot of uh, different needs. They got some depth um, and they got a lot of steals. Like I said before, one of the words we kept hearing over and over and over and over and over and over is steal, steal, steal. Why this guy's a steal? I can't believe this guy dropped. I can't believe this guy's still available. I can't believe the Ravens picked him. Oh, he was rated super high on my board, but the Ravens got him this low. Wow, that's crazy. And that's a great, that, that is a beautiful thing. Ravens, one of the biggest things that they did this draft uh, was help really build the wall, really build up that offensive line and build up the depth in the offensive line too. And we're going to talk about that in more detail probably later on this week. But the draft was good. We're just missing, missing that one spot and wondering what that next spot is going to be. Who's going to be the guy in that next spot? No Bateman, Bateman gonna be there, but who else is it gonna be? Is it gonna be Duvernay? Are, are the, the young guys gonna get their opportunity to shine? Are they really gonna get it? Or are the Ravens gonna find a veteran somewhere? And like I said before, I just I, I don't envision them going into next season without a veteran. Without a veteran at wide receiver. Cause these guys, they all lack experience. Especially in the playoffs. They all lack experience. Rashad Bateman, Tylen Wallace. And again, it's, it's not that they couldn't, but they have never stepped foot in a playoff game before. They haven't. Haven't stepped foot in a playoff game before. Playoff atmosphere, no. I mean, they haven't even played a full season yet. Either one of them. And of course, I know freak injuries happen. Rashad Bateman early on, he had his uh, groin injury, I think. Or was it his hurt? No, no. Was it the hernia or groin? I forgot. Oh, it's groin. Yeah, it's around the same area. Um, and then Tylen Wallace, he had his crazy injury on um, the fake punt. Um, so, yeah. But, and then we got Devin, I mean, Duvernay and Prochet. I keep calling him Devin, but Duvernay and Prochet. And they, uh, they were drafted in 2020. We did make the playoffs then. But, yeah, man. Y'all, y'all remember that. Our quarterback, he couldn't even finish the playoff game. Couldn't even finish the playoff game. Because, you know, Patrick McCarr, he was trying to play a little quarterback in that game, too. But anyway, man, I, I'm, I'm, I'm very, uh, I'm just excited, man. I'm very excited to see how Ravens address this. Because um, I'm just wondering. I'm wondering. I just do not know, have no clue, no inclinations, no nothing. Uh, but that's what makes it so fun. I love y'all team. Keep it clean. I appreciate y'all. We have literally one million questions from subscribers. Uh, we have just a lot. Like y'all sent a lot. The patrons sent a lot of questions. Uh, everybody else sent the, uh, the the questions to the e It's a lot of questions. We will get through them. Appreciate y'all being patient. I love y'all. Thank you. Anybody that has sent me a DM over the past couple of days, I'm not ignoring you. I just am backed up with everything, like everything. So just know that. But thank you all for subscribing. Thank you all for supporting. Um, crazy that we are, uh, and every, every time, I probably shouldn't say that loud. Every time I say that loud, that's when I feel like it's not going super slow, super slow, which is fine. No rush, but we almost at, uh, at 54,000. We are 53 as of this recording at 4.34 p.m. We are 53 subscribers away from 54,000. Y'all are crazy. Um, but I love y'all and I really appreciate the support. And before I start getting emotional, just thinking about just the crazy amount of support, I'm going to go ahead and get off now. I love y'all. We out.